Hi, I'm Mitch from Sonam International and welcome back to our Anaplan tutorial series. Today we are going to conclude our three-part series on the different security settings in Anaplan. We've already looked at roles and selective access, which means now we're going to look at dynamic cell access and how you can use that in your Anaplan model. Let's get started. Here we are back again with the Leprechaun Smoothie Company with the same model we were using in part one and two of this series. So if you want a full overview of the model, go to part one on roles. Today we're going to be using the country sales manager dashboard again, so I'll quickly go over it just so we're all on the same page. On top we have BU 1.1, which is showing us the budgeted volumes for the year, a percentage increase you can give to that budgeted volume to get the sales target for next year. This is on a country level. Underneath we have the same info on a plant level, so split between plants, and then we also have the ability to override the allocated sales target, but the sales volume for the country stays the same. So what is Dynamic Cell Access, or DCA? Very simply, it's a boolean tick that you can use to lock or unlock or give read or write access to specific cells in a model. So whilst selective access works for lists and list members, Dynamic Cell Access works for cells. Let's demonstrate this. So we have a module DA01 where we have a lock boolean, which you can tick or untick, a read boolean, which is always true, and a write boolean, which is the opposite of lock. I'm going to add this to the dashboard just for demonstration. So what we want to do is make it so that whenever somebody clicks the lock boolean, that nobody else can edit anything on the dashboard. In this case, it primarily relates to the percentage increase and then the override volume and the override boolean. To do that, we need to open the source module, go to the blueprint view, and you can see that we have two tabs here the read access driver and the write access driver. Write access driver allows you to decide when a specific line item can be edited. In our case, we want to edit when the dashboard is not locked, which we set up in DA01 with the write line item. Now that we've added that to our write access driver, if we click the lock button, you can't write it. But you also can't see it, and that's because we didn't set a read access driver. This is very important to note when playing with DCA. If you want something to be readable but not editable, you need to add a read access driver as well. In our case, we just want it set to true. And that's what we'll add to our read access driver from DA01. Now that we've done that, if we go back to our dashboard, you can see that you can read the percentage increase when lock is ticked and then edit it when lock is unticked. I'm going to quickly go ahead and add that to our BU 1.2 as well. Alrighty, now that I've done that, and you can see that when we click the lock button, the override volume and the override boolean is read only as well. Now you can see how DCA works in the very basic form. Let's step it up a notch by adding dimensionality. Let's say we want it to work by country, not for the whole dashboard. To do that, we need to go back to DA01 and add the country dimension to our applies to column. Once we've done that, we can go back to the dashboard and you will see that it has been applied. I'm going to pivot our table just to make it look a little nicer for this demonstration. And as you can see, we have dynamic cell access by country. We tick the United Kingdom and the United Kingdom and its plants are now locked and we can't edit them. You can already see how dynamic cell access is getting more complex. Let's move on. With DCA, you don't have to stop at one rule. You can combine multiple rules. At the moment, our plant managers can get a little bit confused because they can enter an override volume but not have the final volume change, as you can see now. That's because the override volume only works when the override button is ticked. So we want to make it that you can't enter an override volume unless that button is ticked. Here is how we can add the functionality whilst keeping the locking mechanism we put in before. First, we will want to change the read access driver to be aligned with the override boolean we had before. So very simply, change it to that boolean. Next, we want the write access driver to work with the override function and with the locking function we had before. To do that, we've made another line item which adds them together. 
Note that we have to look up the country that the original locking function is applying to. Once we've done that, we can add that as our right access driver. Go back to the dashboard and test it out. First of all, you can see that we can only see the override volume when we click the override boolean. Now, if we try the locking function, you see it works as well. That's a very simple example of how you can add two rules together with DCA. Let's do one final example where we can see how dynamic cell access is extremely dynamic and can be used in multiple different situations. Let's say we have plant managers who work with plants based on their size. How can we have it so they only can access plants in their size range and still have it adhere to our locking by country that we implemented before? To do this, we have created three new modules. The first one is a systems module where you can see who has been allocated to which plant sizes. I'm going to add this to our country sales manager dashboard just for the demonstration. Next, we have our threshold module where you can see the minimum and maximum size for each plant size group. And then we have the actual DA module itself. First of all, it checks which plant is in which size based on the minimum and maximum thresholds. Then you can go into blueprint view and see it also has the right access line item which checks these thresholds against the users we had in our other systems module. Now that we have our right access boolean set up, we can go back to BU 1.2 and update our right access drivers. Something that's very interesting to note is that even though we haven't added the user's dimension to BU 1.2, DCA will still work by user, and a plan knows who is reading and writing specific modules and dashboards and will change accordingly. Now that we've updated the right access driver, I only have access to mid-tier plants. If we take a look at the US, that means I don't have access to New York because it's too small, but I do have access to Los Angeles. What shows how dynamic this is, is if I change the percentage increase from United States to 20% from 2%, I now have access to New York, but I lose access to Los Angeles. It's too big. If I change my band access to include large plants, I now have access to Los Angeles. Let's combine all three of our accesses together now. If we go to BU 1.2, you can see we have Write Access Final, which combines our DA02 and DA01 accesses, and then we have the same for the override volume, which includes the override access. So all we need to do is go and change our write access drivers. Now that DCA is set correctly, we can test it out. I can lock the EMEA region, leaving me access to only the mid-tier plants of Sydney, Los Angeles, and Montreal. Furthermore, I can only see and edit an override volume if I have the override boolean ticked. Remember, DCA can take almost any boolean as an input, making it much more dynamic than selective access. To get full use of this, you need to try it out in your own Anaplan model. If you get stuck, you can always come back and rewatch this video. And that concludes our series on all the different security settings in Anaplan. Remember that you will usually need a combination of all three methods to achieve the goal you want, and now you know how each setting works. Subscribe to be notified whenever we release a new video, and follow us on LinkedIn for more useful content. I hope you like this video, I'll see you next time.